So this is a presentation, as you know, for New Kensington freshmen and sophomores, and it's all about career prep as it relates to your transition to the Smeal College of Business for your junior and senior years. So we will go ahead and get into it. So first and foremost, I wanted to introduce myself just so you had an idea of who this information is coming from and where this info is coming from. So my name is Maria Walls and I am a employee in the Smeal Business Career Center, which is the career services center specific to the Smeal College of Business at the Penn State University Park Campus. So my role as an employee is the Change of Campus Program Coordinator and career coach. So within my role, basically I am just here to help Commonwealth campus students who are tracking SMEAL complete a successful transition and be prepared for the job and internship search processes that happen for a student's junior and senior years. So I'm really here to help you when you're still at the new Kensington campus with your career prep and I'm here to help you after you transition to SMEAL. So I work with both populations of University Park and Commonwealth campus students. So if in the future you want to reach out to me, there's different ways you can do that. First and foremost is my email, which you can see on the screen. You can email me anytime you want about literally anything, ask questions about anything and everything related to career prep, academics, um, anything with a transition. If I don't have the answer, I'll make sure that I get you um, in contact with somebody who can answer the question for you. And then aside from email, I'm also available for appointments. So as a New Kensington student, you will be meeting with me primarily, or I guess exclusively, um, over Zoom. So we could set that up anytime you need. And then when you transition, I'm also available for in-person appointments in the business building. And then lastly, tonight after this presentation, I'm going to be holding drop-in hours from 6.30 to 7.30. So if you feel like you want to talk about anything further that wasn't addressed during this presentation or you just want feedback on stuff, feel free to come to drop-in hours and we can chat a little bit. All right, so as far as agenda goes, I wanted to give you an idea of what we're going to be talking about during this presentation because I think it's critical in understanding why this stuff is so important. So first, we're going to be talking about key career resources that you need to be aware of in order to be successful with career prep. And second, we're going to learn about how to maximize your first and second years. So the reason that I'm giving you advice to maximize your first and second years is because freshman and sophomore year are, years are so important for you in preparing for the job and internship searches that come your junior and senior years. So if and when you transition to SMEAL at University Park, you're going to be do, likely doing that your junior year. And it's going to be a big transition, as you probably are already thinking and imagining. It's just a lot of change going on at once. You know, you're in a new place, you're making new friends, you're getting adjusted to the campus, going to new classes, meeting new professors. And amongst this change, the last thing that I want you to be worrying about is trying to squeeze two years of career prep into two weeks. Because the career fairs start in the fall during the second week of class. And so students will transition to University Park. They're like, all right, I'm here. Oh my gosh, now all of a sudden the career fairs are starting. I don't even have a resume put together. I don't know what to do about interviewing. I'm not even sure what jobs I want to apply for. So moral of the story is it's a very overwhelming time. It's a very overwhelming process. So I basically just want to give you this information now so that you can work on these things your freshman and sophomore year and the summer before your transition. So that if and when you do transition to SMEAL that once the career fairs get started and the internship process gets started, that you at least have one less thing to worry about. So we will go ahead and get into these two topics. Okay, so starting off with key career resources. All right, so first and foremost, as a New Kensington student, you have the Career Services and Professional Development Office at your disposal. So this is in the Student Union Building on the lower level. Sorry, my cat sleeps all day, and then when I have something to do, she meows, so I'm sorry if you can hear that. Um, but yeah, so like I said, um, this is where it's located, and what I recommend to you is that you make at least one point of contact with this office your freshman year and your sophomore year, so two points of contact in total while you're still a student at New Kensington. And 
The reason for this is number one, because they're career service office and they can answer questions and help you with things and give you advice, um, help you with resources. But more specifically, they have tailored information based off of what you need as a new Kensington Penn State student. So they're aware of all of the student organizations and extracurricular opportunities that are available to you to build up your resume. They might be hosting some professional development events that can help get you access to information or employers. You know, they have an idea of what's local around your area. So maybe you're looking and getting a job off campus or volunteering in a local nonprofit. They would have all of the relevant information to help you. So I can't recommend enough, like I said, making at least one point of contact with this office per academic year, because they'll be able to give you the information that you need um, to bulk up your resume. Wow, this meowing is just really crazy right now. All right, so then we go into University Park Career Resources. So there are two, key offices on the University Park campus. Oh my gosh, this is me. I hold on a second. I need to stop this. Gonna mute myself. Okay, apologies. I cannot focus whenever she's doing that. Um, okay, so like I said, there are two key career offices on the University Park campus that are available to you as a business tracking student. So first and foremost is the Business Career Center. Like I said, this is the office that I work in. And this is the office that's available to two populations. So SMEAL undergraduates, so students in the Business College at UP, and also SMEAL tracking Commonwealth campus students. So this office, the Business Career Center, even though it's housed within the University Park campus, all of its resources, all of its services and events are still available to you as a New Kensington student. So please, please know that. And basically the Business Career Center should be your point of contact for any business specific information. So because we only serve business students, we have the expertise and the knowledge on you know, business internships, business jobs, how to function at a business career fair versus something like an education career fair, um, information that's updated within the field about you know, hiring statistics per major or specific companies that want to hire business students, basically anything business related, we have the expertise on. Then we also have Penn State Career Services, and I usually call this BOA because it's Penn State BOA in the Bank of America building. So Penn State BOA is um, the career service office that's available to students at the University Park campus, regardless of major or college that they're enrolled in. So they serve every college on campus and they serve every student of any major, minor, certificate, et cetera. So Penn State BOA would be a good point of contact for you if maybe you're double majoring and your second major is outside the College of Business. Maybe you are getting an accounting degree, but your senior year, you're like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do accounting. How do I change gears and look for a job that's outside of the business world? So anything non-business related, I would definitely talk to Penn State BOA and anything business specific, talk to the SMEAL BCC. So giving you more specific information on the BCC, just because I think, you know, throughout your four years, it's most likely going to be your biggest point of contact. There's essentially three umbrellas that our office functions under. The first is career coaching, and that basically just describes career coaches in our office. So we have, I think, five or six employees that are specifically career coaches. I'm one of them. Um, and they meet with students in one-on-one -on -one appointments to talk about anything and everything related to the career search process. So that could be working on resumes, it could be improving cover letters, preparing for job interviews, um, preparing for career fairs, etc. So anytime you want to meet with someone to talk one-on-one, -on -one, that would fall under the career coaching bucket. And we're available in appointments all day, every day. Then second would be employer connections. So I like to think of us as kind of the middle person between corporate recruiters and Penn State students. So Penn State students are obviously looking for jobs after graduation, that's a no brainer, and they want to get connected with corporate recruiters. And corporate recruiters out there, big companies, they're looking for people to hire. So we try to connect them with Penn State students. So we're just there facilit facilitating that relationship and those relationships really in whatever capacity is needed. 
And then lastly, professional development events. So we host a lot, a lot of events within the Business Career Center. Some of them are put on by BCC employees, and some of them are put on by employers. Some of them are a hybrid. But some stuff you could expect to see would be like a workshop on how to write a resume, an employer information session on an upcoming internship whose application is going to be open in the next couple of weeks. And then we have things as big as career fairs. Um, we have several career fairs every semester, so it's a pretty big responsibility of ours. But moral of the story is we have events that are available for you to attend. So in a typical year, outside of this very rare coronavirus pandemic, all of our events, or maybe even 95, 90% of them are located in person. So unfortunately, those events would only be accessible if you were to drive to the University Park campus. But at least for the rest of this academic year, and potentially to some extent in the fall, we have all of our events virtual. So 2020 to 2021 academic year, all of our events are virtual. So if you go onto our business course on our website, you can find the information and attend any of them that you want. But then in the future, whenever we go back to normal, whatever the heck that means anymore, it will all be in person. Okay, so being that in a typical year, most of what you'd be accessing as um, a New Kensington student through the BCC would be online. I want to give you some information about your, basically your biggest go-to resource, which would be the BCC website. So there's a few things on here that I wanna highlight. The first, like I said, you can find all of our information on events through this page. You just go onto the events tab, if you can see on the screenshot on the right, and just go in, key into each event, see what's going on, see who's coming, and then you can get the link to RSVP. Next, we have online resources. So that could be tips, handouts, and videos on topics like resumes, interviewing, career fairs, et cetera. We have hiring statistics, which is one of my favorite parts of the website. Um, there's two things I'll mention there. The first is we have stats on like, what is the starting salary for someone in accounting versus finance? What are the employment rates upon graduation per major, et cetera? And then we also have statistics that are self-reported based on past internships and jobs that students have done. So for example, let's say I interned at Deloitte this past summer. I could go into our internship search database and just say, you know, I worked at Deloitte. This was my salary. This is my supervisor. I was at this location. This is what I was doing on a daily basis. I liked it or I didn't like it. You know, here are the people I worked with, et cetera. So I love that functionality just because it helps students who are maybe looking for an internship at Deloitte be like, all right, is this really going to be the right fit for me? Is this really the company culture I'm looking for? Do I want to be at this location, et cetera? And then we also have great info on career options for your major. So let's say you are accounting, but you don't know what type of accounting you want to do and therefore don't know what jobs to apply for. We have some info on our website that'd be good for guidance with that. Next, we have SMEAL student organization information on our website. So we're going to talk a little bit about involvement and student orgs later, but this is where you can find that info whenever you need it. And then we also have a link to Nittany Line Careers. So we're going to go over that in the next slide. And it's super important that you know Nittany Line Careers because I think it's the most important online app access resource and, and just job search platform that you'll be using as a Penn State student. So Nitty Line Careers has multiple functions and I'll outline the most important ones for you. So like I alluded to before, this is a platform that you can utilize to search for jobs. So you can search for internships and full-time jobs and actually apply for those positions through Nitty Line Careers. So this platform doesn't have every job in every state, in every country, in the entire world that's available to you to apply to. Um, that would be a really big platform. We do not have the internet space for that. But what's nice about Nittany Line Careers is that it's submission-based. So a company like Deloitte would email us and say, we have an internship coming up that we want applications for. So can you post this on your website? So as a result, if you're applying to jobs through Nittany Line Careers, you know that you're applying to positions with companies who specifically want to hire Penn State students. So that's what's nice about this platform is you have this built-in edge of companies already are looking for students in your population. 
Then in the future, if and when you're ever invited to do an on-campus interview, let's say a day after a career fair, you'd be able to sign up for those interviews through NLC. And you can also RSVP and find information on events. Maybe you RSVP'd for this event tonight through NLC, so you've already been able to understand that functionality. And then lastly, if you ever want to schedule a career coaching appointment with me, with anyone in the BCC or Penn State BOA, you would do so through the calendar function in Nittany Lion Careers. Okay, so that is all the information on key career resources. I can't emphasize it enough, you know, make as many connections and, and as many points of contact with these offices as necessary and really as possible. Um, these resources are here to help you, um, here to help you with really anything and everything related to the career search process. So definitely take advantage of them. But now we will be talking about how to maximize your first and second years. So I have six specific steps that I recommend that students do their freshman and sophomore years, just to make sure, like I said, that when you transition your junior year, that you're as prepared and set up for success as possible. So we'll get into them. Okay. So step number one, get involved at your campus and in your local community. So at the end of the day, what we're looking for is a job, right? And in order to get that job offer, we need to do really, really well in an interview. And in order to even get that interview, we need to make sure that we have a really good resume that stands out to somebody that makes them excited to talk to us, makes them interested and confident that we might be a good fit. And in order to have a resume of that caliber, it needs to be filled with good experiences and good skill sets. You know, you can't turn in a blank resume and expect to go anywhere. You need to have great jobs, extracurriculars, skills, et cetera. So my best recommendation for you is if you want to kill it in the internship search junior year and full-time job search senior year, is already have some experiences on your resume at the new Kensington campus that'll set you up for success. So when we're thinking about this, when we're thinking about creating a strong resume, it's really important that we're choosing meaningful experiences. You know, we want to have relevant stuff on here more than just, I have a skill set of teamwork, but I can't really tell you where I got it from. So these are some examples on the screen of things that students get involved in to bulk up their resume. By no means are you expected to hit every single one of these boxes. You know, everyone's different. Everyone has different time commitments, different interests, et cetera. So you're not expected to do every single thing possible at Penn State. But as many different types of experiences that you can get involved in, the better, just because it showcases diversity on your resume. It shows that you're well-rounded and that you're interested in multiple things. And then in addition to that, we also want to make sure that we have a diverse array of skill sets. So we could be involved in all nine of those categories on the previous screen, but if the only skill set we're getting from those is communication, then we don't really have a strong resume. So make sure that in addition to getting involved in a lot of different things, that you're also gaining different skill sets. So again, some examples on the screen of skill sets that you might want to focus on. By no means are you required to have all of them on your resume. And with that in mind too, I always recommend to students that you should kind of tailor them to some extent based on your major and the field you're going into. For example, if you're a finance major, then qualities like leadership, teamwork, communication, problem solving skills are gonna be critical for you to have on your resume. And then if you're an actuarial science major, stuff like analytical skills, computer skills, detail-oriented organization, that stuff's going to be really key for you to have on your resume. So just, again, as many things as possible, the better, but make it work for you um, based on what you're looking to do, make it work for you based on your time commitments, et cetera. Okay, so... All of that's great. I want you to have a strong resume for when you transition your junior and senior years, but you also want to make sure that when you transition that you're able to add current experiences onto your resume. You know, transitioning, like we all know, is a big step. It's a big transition. Um, so if you can make a plan in advance of how you want to get involved at University Park, I think it helps make things a little bit easier during that first month or two at SMEAL. So in advance, I would say utilize your resources. Um, I typically recommend that students make a plan for involvement, maybe their sophomore spring or the summer before their transition, just so the information that they're finding online is still relevant. 
So first things first, um, talking about student organizations, just because this is a pretty big umbrella that encompasses a lot of stuff you could do, it could be athletics, could be student government, um, Greek life, any, any academic professional stuff, you know, student organizations is, are things that, that students typically tend to get involved in um, during their time at Penn State. So that all being said, I wanted to at least give you some guidance as far as what I recommend that you get involved in when you transition. So my best recommendation for you is starting with general student organizations that you get involved in two. So through the course of your junior and senior year, if you years, if you're involved in two general student organizations, that's a good place to be at. And one could be, you know, Greek life, one could be student government, it could be um, religious and spiritual. I think something that showcases your passion and showcases your ability to help others, I think those two separate things um, would be perfect to get involved in. Then, in addition to that, I also recommend getting involved in at least one SMEAL student organization. So SMEAL, the SMEAL College of Business has 40 plus student orgs that are specifically housed within the college. They might be service oriented, they might be related to, um, you know, your major, it might be something of general interest like the sports business club, business fraternities, diversity organizations, etc. But I recommend getting involved in at least one thing because it showcases on your resume that you really are passionate about the field you're going into, that you're trying to connect and network with peers, etc. So like I said, good rule of thumb for your transition is plan to get involved in two general student orgs and one small student org. Then, if you're anything like me, um, you might be thinking about a job when you transition. I almost always had a job um, my sophomore, junior, and senior years just because I didn't like to be bored and I also needed the money. So if you think that this might be something um, worth pursuing for whatever reason, I definitely recommend planning for this early just because jobs get filled pretty quickly. So like I said, the spring or the summer before your transition, check out some of these Penn State resources. Look at these job websites, look at these department websites and see what might be available for you to apply to and then apply and hopefully it works out. And keep in mind too that there's obviously so many opportunities on campus for student jobs. But of course, in the local community, if you're interested in working at a grocery store, a local business, restaurant, working at a nonprofit, those opportunities are also available to you. I just thought I'd give you some of the links that were most successful for me when I was a Penn State student a few years ago in, in searching for opportunities. So take a screenshot or a picture of this page if you think these links might be helpful to you. And if you want, um, if you can even email me and I can send you the presentation so you have the links readily available. All right, step number three, create a SMEAL resume. So, Step number three, I think is really, really important because like I said, the, the resume and a strong resume, in fact, is really the foundation of the job search process. So if you can have a strong resume ready to go your junior year already done, so you don't even have to worry about it, then that will put you far, far ahead. So here within the SMEAL College of Business, we have what we call a SMEAL resume format. And we call it the SMEAL resume format simply because it depicts what we as SMEAL BCC employees recommend that students have their resumes look like. And you can see this template and example of this in the blue box on the left of the screen. So the reason that we recommend this format and the reason we even have it to begin with is because over the years, we in the BCC have gotten a lot of feedback from recruiters who want to hire Penn State students. And they've given us feedback on student resumes and applications. So what they like to see on a resume versus what they don't really want to see, you know, what makes them put it in the yes or the no pile, how they like to have it formatted, what types of information um, they want to have in certain places. You know, we've gotten a ton of feedback on this. And over the years, we have created and refined this resume format. And so far, it's been very successful with our students. Employers love it. They say that it definitely gives Penn State students an edge over students at other schools just because the information is so easily um, digestible. It's specific. Um, it's, it's pointed towards business internships rather than just a general resume. So at the end of the day, you know, your resume is a reflection of you and you should be confident in it. So if you have a resume that you're already proud of and you like the format, then by all means, keep it. 
Um, I just want you to be happy with it and feel that it's strong. But if you're looking for something new, a new format, if you want to just create a new resume entirely, then I recommend considering this no resume format. So if you do decide um, to use this format, I recommend utilizing the resources on the Business Career Center website. So we do have a downloadable format, so you can just plug all of your information into it. We also have a packet with samples, so you can get an idea of what other student resumes look like. We have tips, videos, handouts, et cetera. And then my biggest recommendation with any resume, whether it's the small format or otherwise, is get it reviewed. You know, friends and family are great to review resume for typos and things like that, but career services professionals know how to identify mistakes in certain ways. They know what companies are looking for. So definitely have your resume reviewed either by someone in the BCC, Penn State BOA, or the new Kensington Career Services Office. All right, step number four, sign up for BA 297. So BA 297 is a one credit elective course that's offered through the Smeal College of Business to students at the Commonwealth campuses and students at University Park. So this class, like I said, it's a one credit elective and it's the topic is career planning and strategies. So essentially this class is available to teach you as much as it possibly can about the career search process. So that includes topics like you can see in the green box. So researching companies, career fair prep, documents like cover letters, resumes, um, interviewing, how to build your personal brand, making sure you're choosing the right job offer. Um, basically, like I said, anything and everything from the start of the job search process to the end, which would be accepting the position and transitioning into the position, is stuff that we teach in the class. So if you feel like you need that little push or you need that extra practice to understand the business job search and understand how you can be successful, then I can't recommend this class enough. Um, we actually have data in SMEAL that shows that students who take this class have a higher job placement rate upon graduation. So it seems to be successful. So I recommend taking it. But like I said, it's available to first and second year Commonwealth campus students and University Park students. So if you decide to take it when you're still a student at the new Kensington campus, then you'll be able to do that in an asynchronous virtual class. So you can take it in the fall or the spring. You know, there's no live meeting time every week. There's certainly due dates, but you don't have to log in to like a live class at 1 p.m. on Wednesdays, for example. But if you'd prefer to take it in person during your junior or senior years at University Park, you can also do that. It's held in person one day a week on Wednesdays, actually. So it's really available to you at any point during your Penn State experience. It's just when you feel like it'd be best for you if you do wanna take it. Another thing worth noting is that the weekly lectures are actually taught by a combination of BCC employees and corporate partner employers. So the nice thing about this class is that you get the perspective of two different parties who are integral to the job search process. So if you do want to register um, to take the class when you're still at New Kensington, you can do that by emailing me. I actually am the one who teaches the course to Commonwealth campus students. So just let me know. And then if you decide to take it as a UP student, you can just um, apply through Lion Path or sign up, I mean. All right, step number five, attend a career fair. We are almost done here. Two more steps. So there are four main reasons why it's important for you to go to a career fair before your junior year. So if either of you um, in the presentation right now are sophomores, there's actually still Penn State career fairs available to you this spring. So you, you haven't lost your opportunity, there's still time. But basically the first reason why it's important for you to do this before your junior year is to discover potential opportunities. So I know for me, when I was a freshman at Penn State um, in 2013, I had an idea of what I wanted to do with my major, but I didn't actually know what types of companies would be hiring me. I didn't know what positions were available to me as a junior looking for an internship. So I didn't really know where to start. So that's why career fairs are super helpful because you can go and, and even just being there tells you, you know, what type of companies are gonna be hiring me based on my major. You know, you could talk to people and get an understanding of what positions might be applicable to you. So it's great simply for information gathering about opportunities. So number two is learn how to become a highly qualified candidate. So my favorite question that I recommend that freshmen and sophomores ask specific companies at the career fairs 
is what can I do to set myself apart from other candidates when it's time for me to apply for your positions? Employers love that question. They always give great insight, whether it's about experiences, skill sets, um, what to have on your resume versus what not to worry about as much. So if you ever want to get that edge in the application process, go early and ask that question. Number three is to build and maintain professional relationships. So one of the best pieces of info that I've learned in working for the BCC is that Penn State alumni who work for certain companies tend to volunteer for those career fairs and they come back year after year. So for example, I know at this point that if I go to the Smeal Mega Fair, which is our biggest career fair in the fall, and I pass the Dick's Sporting Goods goods booth that every year I'm going to see John and Alexis because they love to represent their company at our career fairs and they went to Penn State. So the nice thing about going early as an underclassman is that you can start to build these relationships with people so that by the time you get to your junior or senior years, you already know John and Alexis, they have your back, they understand that you're a great student, you're highly qualified, and if you submit an application, they can push you along in the job search process. So definitely utilize your networking resources in that regard. And then lastly, familiarize yourself with the environment. You know, it's no secret that um, career fairs are really intimidating. Most people do not like them. I know that I wasn't a fan of them when I was a student because it was just scary. And so as comfortable as you can get with the environment early on, the better. So just go talk to people, you know, get those nerves out so that your junior and senior years, when it matters, you can perform as, as high as you possibly can. And then last step, step number six, is sign up for the SMEAL Alumni Mentoring Program. So what's nice about this program is that you are eligible as a UP student and you're also available or eligible as a SMEAL Tracking Commonwealth Campus student. So you don't have to wait to transition to SMEAL if you wanna get involved. And so basically the way it works, it's super simple. You just apply, fill out an application, just say, you know, here's everything about me. And I'm looking to get matched with an alum that is, you know, in the same career field that I want to go into, or is working at a company that I'm interested in, or maybe had the same major that I'm currently majoring in. And so you get set up with them and pretty much you can just use them at your disposal. Um, you can get advice on selecting a major, making sure that you're doing the right things to create a strong resume, understanding and pursuing career paths, applying for specific companies or positions. You know, I like to think of alums as being one of the best resources for, for Penn State students, because at the end of the day, who knows better than people who've already been around the block, who have done everything that you are currently doing. So I definitely recommend utilizing this resource. All right, so that's all I have for maximizing your first and second years. There's a lot of steps. Um, if you consider six to be a lot, but definitely, definitely recommend doing as many of them as you can, just because these are the things that will really, really help you in the transition to UP as far as career search goes. So my last piece of advice for you was really just to do your best with all of this. Anything career prep, career planning, it really just takes effort. Um, these are not innate skills. You're not born learning how to create a resume. You're not born knowing how to be successful at interviewing. This is stuff that you have to practice and you have to learn. So my best advice for you is make as big of an effort as you possibly can, and I promise you will be okay. So that's all I have for tonight. I really appreciate you guys coming. I hope that the information was helpful in one way or another. Please, please feel free to reach out to me at any point in time. You're never bothering me. I'm happy to help. And just good luck. Good luck with the rest of your semester. Good luck with your summer, and hopefully I'll get to see you and meet you um, if and when you transition. So thank you so much, and have a good rest of your night.